Jesus Christ is King of it. He lives his life in us for the sake of the world. Jesus is alive today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And welcome also to this beautiful rural church of St Mary's, Warham Le Street. I am the Reverend Nicola Penn Allison and I work within the Diocese of York as the Interim Deanery Priest to the Southern Rydale Deanery. Imagine the Deanery as a family. And if you can picture a family tree, our family in Southern Rydale Deanery has eight branches two of which reside within towns, the other six within our beautiful rural countryside. And each one of those branches has their own twigs, our parish churches, and the faithful and worshipping congregations that uh, reside there and serve there. In this deanery, we are currently exploring new ways to work together to share ideas and resources and to come together for worship and service to our communities. My role takes me across the whole of the deanery. Hence, this service has been recorded across all eight branches. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known upon the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of the prophet Amos, chapter 8, beginning at verse 4. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, When will the new moon be over, so that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Gospel reading today is taken from Luke, chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, 
a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with a dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You ever wondered how theological the Monopoly board is? I mean, here's a question for you. Can you name all the squares on the Monopoly board, starting from the beginning and ending in the last one, in chronological order? I'll give you a clue. There's an Old Kent Road and there's a Mayfair. Personally, my favourite is the Old Kent Road. I mean, for sort of familial reasons, both mum and dad came from the Old Kent Road, one at one end, one at the other one. But also, it's an interesting property. And the way I like it is because it's such in contrast to Mayfair at the other end of the spectrum. I also love the Old Kent Road because there's a pub, well, there used to be a pub there called The World Turned Upside Down. And if ever we're going through a stage where the world is being turned upside down, I think it's now. But it's not just now, is it really? I mean, when you listen to our first reading from Amos, he was a, an 8th century prophet. He, he actually came from that Jerusalem area in the southern kingdom of Judah. But he actually prophesied more in the northern kingdom, that sort of Samaria. And he prophesied the doom of the northern kingdom because they weren't following the pathway of God. They were turning his world into their world. They were reshaping it in a way that really wasn't God's way. And he had a real rant about them. This was before the Assyrians came and took over, but he warned them, unless you make your world right with God, unless you turn it into the God shape that it wants to be, there's some terrible things gonna to happen to you. And he had a real go at them about it. They were very selfish, very self-centered, and he really wanted to hammer it home that this was not the way, not the shape of the world God wanted it to be. They were being what they thought was right, that it wasn't the way God was right. There was a wonderful program on Channel 4, or oh, a few months ago now, where wannabes from London who were stressed out with their jobs and their careers and their Instagram and their TikTok and all the social media that they were on, actually wanted to de-stress. And they set up a farm somewhere in, I think it was the West Country. And they brought in an Amish family to come and help them. And there was great trials and tribulations beginning getting rid of all their iPhones and their Androids and no television and going back to basics. And the absolute confusion and frustration most of them felt. And the anger and bitterness that came out amongst them almost divided the pack. So at one stage, in one of the bitter arguments that came out, the Amish leader interrupted and said, I'm so sorry about this, but in our communities, we try and say, it's nice to be right, but actually it's right to be nice. And that really impacted me. It's nice, to, I want to be right, I want to have my own way, but actually God's way is it's right to be nice. And that's what Amos was trying to hammer home. Because by being nice means you look after other people, not yourself. And that's the way that God wants the world to be. 
And God rejoices in that and blesses those people who do the right thing, do the right thing in his way. And that comes out with the psalmist in Psalm 113 we've heard today, where God blesses those who help the orphans and the widows and make sure people are fed and watered because out of your own generosity, that's what God wants you to do. And that's a wonderful psalm. It talks about the wonder of actually giving big generously, turning the world a bit more into God's shape than the shape that you might want it to be or the world wants it to be. Not driven by wealth, but driven by humility and compassion and kindness. And in Jesus' lifetime, his world was turned upside down. First century Palestine had been invaded on many occasions and now was under the confines of the Romans. And you get these questions time and time again. People asking Jesus, how do I follow the pathway of God really? How do I make sure it's the right pathway? And Jesus has this wonderful, quirky analogy about a master and his steward looking after the affairs. And it's often called the dishonest steward or the, the, the dishonest uh, servant. I think it's more actually a creative master, a creative servant. Because when Jesus speaks about it, he talks about the common problems that are happening in the world, in the locality, about not being able to pay your way, getting into debt. What's the best and the most easiest solution? Well, it's just kind to be creative and do the right thing. Lessen the bills, make sure people can pay, and move on in a right and kind way. And that's what Jesus encourages us all to do, us as a church, to be more creative, not to look on the old way of doing things, but to look on the new way of doing things, to reinterpret scripture in a way that's suitable for the new generations and generations to come. Do you remember Jesus said, I'm not gonna disregard the prophets, I'm not gonna take anything away from the law, I just want us to reinterpret it, to revisit it and read it through the light of a modern context. And I think we know where our churches are going through flux at the moment. And it calls us, begs us, implores us to be creative in the way that we're thinking. Because Jesus said to his disciples, go and teach all nations, go and baptize all nations, go and do the right thing by being kind to others. Look back on your history and reinterpret it into a way that fits a modern culture. So I think it is the good thing, the God thing, to reshape the world. It's its right to be kind and it's right to be nice, not nice to be right. And if you are nice and kind and compassionate, God does bless you. It makes you feel good. There's, it, there's, there, there's an absolute joy, if you think about it, in giving and seeing the smiles and the happiness that you are creating for other people. That's the way God wants the world to be reshaped. And Jesus tells his disciples to go and do this, to turn the world of money and wealth and selfishness upside down into the way God wants his world to be. So, if you do have a go at that Monopoly quiz and you want to try and name all the squares in the right order, remember the first one is go. Go and turn the world upside down and make it the right shape that God wants it to be in your life as well as those for others as well. In Jesus' name.
let us declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the Allotment Church at St Peter's Upper Helmsley. This beautiful rural church is one of ten twigs which make up the Harton Benefice, which is one of the eight branches of the Southern Rydale Deanery Tree, where our theme is Growing God's Garden. We ask you, Lord, to hear us as we pray. In this place of birdsong and the gentle rustling of leaves, we pray for areas of the world where the sounds are of war, and people are frightened in the present and fearful for the future. We pray for those who have the responsibility to work to end conflict and to support those affected, that they will hear your voice and be guided by your wisdom to effective and lasting solutions. Amen. This allotment church provides a close connection to our beautiful but fragile planet and so we pray for our world, especially in this time of ever greater pressures on our environment and the climate. Help us to be active and wise custodians of what we hold in trust for future generations, so that they too can marvel at the wonders of your creation. We pray for those who use this allotment church, especially the young children who come with their families to learn about you and the aubergines, our group of older children who are exploring their faith and learning lifelong practical skills. We pray too for all places of different kinds where children and adults can get to know you and for those who support and facilitate their wonderful journey of discovery. Amen. This allotment church is a product of people working together and so we give thanks for generosity whether that be money or, in this instance, the giving of equipment, time, skill, seeds and plants which have grown into produce shared amongst the local villages. In all parts of our large deanery, the heart of our faith is in our communities, binding us together from the rural hamlets to our market towns. And so, wherever we are, and whatever our context, we pray for the generosity energy and creativity to see new ways to serve and so live out your message of hope and love in the places where we are. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so the blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.